Uh, most people, when you say the word influenza, they think about that annoying vaccine they have to have every year in the fall. And there's a good reason we give that annoying vaccine every year in the fall. And it lies with the years 1918-19, near the end of World War I, when influenza, the greatest pandemic we've ever known, influenza that year, swept across the world. Estimates are between conservatively 30 million and on the outlying edge, perhaps up to 55 or 60 million individuals died within one year. The influenza pandemic made bubonic plague look pretty trivial because that took a number of years for, for that to, to move. Influenza is an interesting virus. It's not actually a human virus in, this, in the sense of many diseases that are just associated with humans. It's an avian or bird virus. It hangs out in the bird population. That makes it a zoonose. But this virus also can infect pigs and horses and eventually humans. And because of this, uh, who knows, we'll never be able to get rid of influenza. We only will have the capacity to control it. This virus has an interesting architecture. It is an RNA virus. So inside the capsid, or the protein shell of this virus lies RNA instead of DNA. The interesting thing about RNA is that it mutates single-stranded RNA about 10 times faster than DNA. So this virus has a great capacity as it passed from one host to another to mutate. The other thing that makes this virus interesting is that this RNA is not in a single molecule, but it's in a number of segments that are found inside the virus. This allows for reassortment of these segments when multiple viruses infect the same host. These two factors allow influenza to mutate quite rapidly and even pick up dramatic changes when multiple viruses recombine in the same host. And this is what leads to what we call antigenic drift as the virus mutates a little bit each time as the RNA is mutated or antigenic shift when we get major recombinations of these RNA segments. That's why we'll always be getting that little immunization every fall. The other interesting thing about influenza is that it has these spikes on the outside of it. So its RNA determines these protein spikes that stick out of it. There are two types of spikes. There's the H spike or hemagglutin, and there's the N spike or neuraminidase. These spikes, as they stick out, it's the subtle mutations in them that then allow our immune system not to recognize it and have to gear up again. And when we get a major shift in these spikes, that leads to a new pandemic of influenza. Influenza uh, does this uh, generally in the lung cells of pigs. So where you have cultures that have uh, uh, fowl like ducks and pigs and humans in close association, as is found in many places in China, and in Asia, you're gonna have this melting pot, this perfect melting pot for, for influenza to mutate and then reach out to a human host. One last thing about influenza is that uh, recently, in the last 10 or 15 years, we've noticed, epidemiologists have noticed, that influenza is now mutating and has acquired the ability, at least some strains, to go from the bird to the human without going through the pig and the horse. We call this bird flu, and we've had several outbreaks, two strains primarily. One of the, the first strain that we discovered had a fatality rate of 50% among humans that it infected, and just recently, in the last uh, couple of years, we've had a new strain that has come out. They have different spikes on them, and so a vaccine to one would not affect the other. But it is disconcerting to see that influenza has this capacity uh, to make this leap from birds to humans. The vaccine that uh, you receive each year is also interesting because it's actually three strains of influenza in that vaccine. And where did we get those three strains? We have a massive worldwide surveillance program. Take samples of people who are infected with influenza and then try to determine which new strains of influenza are sweeping around the world and develop a vaccine with our best scientific guess as to which three strains 
will be the most prevalent that year, and that's the vaccine you get. So as influenza changes, you need a vaccine every year to combat the new strains of influenza that pop up. So influenza, why does it capture our attention? Because of its great capacity to mutate and also because of 1918-19, when we had the greatest single recorded pandemic of all time. So as epidemiologists, as healthcare professionals, uh, we pay close attention to influenza. It's a virus that's gonna be with us for a while, and it's a virus that can have incredible consequences for humans. Most epidemiologists say it's not if, but when the next great pandemic strain of influenza hits humans.